There was a girl that got stabbed in there and she got stabbed real bad. Not only did we have lots of allegations of rape, but we also had a lot of domestic violence incidents in the hostel. When I was at the YMCA, uh, the centre was definitely not secure enough. He started shouting, swearing, banging on the windows and telling me he's going to wait for me when I finish work. There's no cameras there. People being taken into blind spot areas of the CCTV and being beaten up and drugs being pushed on them. We had a guy who jumped off a balcony after being chased by another resident. The ceiling fell through. So I went down the stairs and I said to them, look, this has just woken me up, it's falling on me. They didn't move me rooms. I had to sleep in that room. Working at the YMCA has actually put me off because I thought the whole point of it was helping people to develop, helping people to be independent, to help people live a better life. And instead, I haven't seen any of that. Imagine you're 18. You can't stay at home because of your abusive parents. You've been working a minimum wage job for two years and don't have enough money for your own place. You go to the council because otherwise you'll have to sleep on the street. The YMCA North London is a hostel specifically for young people like this. It's based in the borough of Haringey, which is the third highest level of homelessness in England. But we found out there are some serious failings with this hostel. Ready? Over the last two years, 36 staff have left the YMCA North London. Crime is rife in the hostel and barely manageable. There have been three rapes and two stabbings in the last two years. Jane contacted the BBC last year because she was so concerned about the YMCA North London, and she's not the only person. Over the past few months, we've spoken to a number of former residents and staff. These are some of their stories. The impact of the violence was, was very strong. At one point we had to take out five injunctions against residents that we'd evicted from the building. If there is a fight, you may have four or five people involved in the fight and then 30 or 40 bystanders that are all crowding around. That It's really hard to disperse. The hostel is a basic temporary accommodation for 16 to 35 year olds. It should provide them with enough support to get back on their feet. All residents have to pay to stay there, but Haringey Council pay for extra support for around a third of them. At one end of the scale, typical residents include ex-offenders, substance misusers and gang members. At the other end, some residents are fleeing domestic abuse, they're asylum seekers or they've come from care. When Tammy first moved in a few years ago, she was one of the youngest residents. There was a girl that got stabbed in there and she got stabbed real bad. I thought they were just punching each other, but basically the girl was stabbing her. She got stabbed so many times, like all over from the leg to the shoulder. I just felt a bit traumatised. And like, I spoke to a social worker as I was still under 18 when this happened and I wanted to move. The reason I didn't feel safe is because I wasn't moved. I feel like it could have happened to me. Yeah. Tammy lived in the YMCA for years, despite being told she would only be there for one night. After the stabbing, her mental health started to deteriorate. Every few months, I think I'd have a breakdown in there. I was really depressed there most of the time. I didn't get much support at all. Some staff did try, but sometimes I just go out of the building and like just stay away as much as I could. Yeah, when I first became homeless, this is when I first put my tent up. And what was it like when you were staying home in your tent? Um, cold, wet, lonely, depressed. Last year, Haringey had the highest number of rough sleepers ever recorded in the borough. Kenny was street homeless before moving into the YMCA. He then lived there for two years. My um, physical appearance definitely changed, my mental health changed. It definitely got worse. The YMCA declined our request for an interview, but provided us with a written statement. The YMCA states the safety of residents and staff is paramount. One complaint we've heard over and over again is about the security of the building. Our undercover reporter was able to walk straight in three times by following a resident. Staff did not check our ID to see who we were. That's disgraceful, they just let me in. There could be a criminal. I could have been a criminal. Residents would let their friends in, 
through the back doors, through the canteen doors. Um, people that were banned from the building were able to get in and get access. We had them climbing up the scaffolding, we had them climbing in windows. Um, so no, it wasn't secure then. The YMCA says the hostel is secure. Anyone in the building who we believe should not be there will be questioned by staff and asked to leave. It's also offered to show us round. I've been threatened twice, one by a gentleman that was banned from the YMCA. For some reason, the YMCA decided to have an assessment to bring him back again, and he started shouting, swearing, banging on the windows and telling me he's going to wait for me when I finish work. That must be worrying. To know that you're walking around the building when you're doing patrols and that there could be anyone in there that could have a knife, yeah, most definitely is. At the time of this interview, Amy was working at the YMCA. She told us that many staff and residents felt unsafe, and despite new CCTV being installed, people were still able to sneak into the building. There's only one gentleman that knows how to work the CCTV properly, and he is maintenance and that's it. So if there's an incident, none of us know how to access it or work it. The YMCA says that the relevant staff have all received training and are able to use the CCTV system. So we have seen people walking around the building, even with the new cameras in, that we don't know. We had someone that was evicted who lived in the building for another three months where we couldn't find him because he just lived in people's rooms. Um, and when staff then worked out he was there, he would run down the corridors. Roughly 25% of the residents in the YMCA are female. We've been told there is serious concerns over their safety. There's a, a separate area that where the women um, stay, um, which had a, a rather large door to it, which um, never actually locked properly, so um, males were able to come and go. Is that the female unit? Yeah. Anybody could get in there. The YMCA told us it recently became aware of the situation and have already resolved the issues. One of the guys, we had an injunction against him, he actually came in and slept on the sofas in the canteen because he just didn't care. And then after I left, um, the new management allowed him to move back in where he allegedly raped a visitor, a female visitor. Tammy was also threatened whilst living there. He was a previously banned resident and then he, uh, he moved back in. When I was walking outside, he was walking outside Basically, he was following me, and he was like, oh, like, where should I stab you? And then he pulled out a knife. The YMCA says it has a zero-tolerance approach to violence. It says eviction is a last resort, but based on an individual's behaviour, their ban can sometimes be lifted. The YMCA is in the London borough of Haringey, which has a large concentration of gangs. As a result, a number of residents of former members all still connected. A lot of them, there are no checks on them. The majority of the time that people are coming in, you wouldn't even know that they are gang affiliated until they are there. There was a lot of drugs, there was a lot of issues with drugs and we would do, we would conduct room searches and we would find sort of carrier bags full of you know, weapons, screwdrivers, hammers, knives. Yeah, they found um, a chopper, like a meat cleaver and it's gone missing, can't find it. No one doesn't know where it is. The YMCA states it has a zero-tolerance policy towards drugs and weapons. Despite claiming to help residents rebuild their lives, a lot of the people the BBC spoke to said living at the YMCA had made their lives worse. Now that I'm not there no more, like, I've achieved so much and I've stuck to so much, so I would just say it was like a blockage for me in my life and I will just say it was like hell. Yeah. <laughs> The YMCA has 11 support workers who focus on mental health, substance misuse, offending and gangs, and also on employment, education and training. Just going to open my door. <laughs> <laughs> I had a goal like when I went to the YMCA of a year maximum I was going to have saved and I was going to move out and have... and. Within a week, I just had lost any intention of having my own place. I was like, I'm going to be stuck here forever. This is one of the places I first put my tent up when I first became homeless. Um, it was, yeah, it really was the hardest time of my life. So um, I was beaten up, I, um, I was bitten by a dog. I used to have people chuck stuff at me. 
And you thought by going into the YMCA, your situation would improve? Improve, yeah. When actually, I'd have, I told them on many occasions, I would have happily packed my stuff up and gone and slept on the street than stay at the YMCA. Because I was, I was paying for stuff that I was, wasn't getting. I mean, I had the ceiling fall on me in my sleep. So I went down the stairs and I said to them, look, this has just woken me up, it's fallen on me. And they said, I will get them to come and look at it later. They told me that I needed to move my bed into the middle of the room. They didn't move me rooms. They, I had to sleep in that room. Over the past two years, the YMCA has spent £500,000 on refurbishing the facilities. It aims to deal with emergency repairs within 24 hours. Our undercover reporter spotted these conditions in August this year. Harringay Council inspects the building four times a year and says it didn't see any of these issues during a visit last week. But yeah, like I've been to like the cha chairman of um, the YMCA and I didn't even get a reply. I got like 100 signatures of residents for like the food that they were making us eat and I gave it to the council, the council didn't reply. Kenny claims he was kicked out of the YMCA for being behind on two weeks of rent. As a result, he was living on the streets once again. This was much better than staying at the YMCA. Just because I didn't have the violence, I didn't have the struggles, I didn't have to worry about reporting to people. I wasn't paying for support that I wasn't getting. The YMCA are sorry to hear residents feel they're paying for support they're not receiving. Haringey Council says it's only received three official complaints in the past two years. Whilst our undercover reporter was there, we met another resident who said he was evicted within just two hours' notice. 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. you knock on my door, yeah. you're being evicted, you need to leave by 12. They're like, oh, if you can bring your bank statement and show it to our manager, yeah, you might be able to stay. Yeah? When I give them the bank, uh, bank statement, uh, then I'll wait two minutes. I'll say, cool, let me go up to my room quick, yeah? Uh -huh. right? They changed my locks. But That's I'm, awful, uh, bro. Literally, after you just getting the bank statement. Literally, whilst I was going to the bank to get the statement. No, 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 no. The YMCA says it usually gives seven days' notice of eviction, but in rare circumstances, a resident can be immediately evicted. Overall, the YMCA told us it's a charity trying to make the best of limited resources, and it's continually investing in the hostel. Haringey Council says these claims are based on a small number of historic incidents and do not paint an accurate picture of the service at this time. We have no current concerns about these issues.